Hey guys, Dr. Brad Bodle here, and I hope that you are having a great day. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the three reasons why focusing on TSH to help manage your thyroid or Hashimoto's medication can limit your results and actually prevent you from getting better, even though it's probably the only thing your doctor wants to talk about. And I know you guys already know this, but whenever we're talking about medication, this is to help you learn about it, understand the concepts, but don't go changing this stuff around until you actually have that discussion with your doctor because we don't want your symptoms getting worse. As long as we're on the same page with that, if you like this kind of stuff and enjoy learning about natural concepts and strategies that I've used with thousands of patients to help them lose weight, improve their energy, and improve their overall thyroid symptoms, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and also ring the bell. I post videos every single Thursday and that'll let you know when a new video is available. Now that we've got that out of the way, I did want to start off today by saying, if you're someone who went into your doctor, had abnormal TSH and was prescribed medication, and that helped to normalize your numbers and also help you feel and function better, then that's great. That's what we want for all of our patients. And if you've already achieved your goals, then this video probably isn't for you and that's okay. But what I usually take issue with is many people go through that same process but after they're given medication, there's a few things that happen. One, they notice no change at all. Two, they feel a little bit better for a period of time, but eventually slide back to where they were when they started. Or three, they see some changes and some improvements. Maybe they were exhausted before and now they can complete some of the tasks around their house, but they still really aren't feeling like themselves. And there's a lot of other symptoms that are going on that haven't resolved. Maybe the energy is a little bit better, but they're still having issues with their hair loss, and also they can't seem to lose any weight. These are the people that I really wanna to speak to today and make sure we understand why only focusing on TSH is a problem for achieving all of these goals. Reason number one why focusing on TSH can limit your results is TSH is a brain hormone, not a thyroid hormone. And that's something that commonly gets confused. So the way that I think about it is TSH is kind of like an order form and our brain is constantly monitoring the bloodstream and seeing how much thyroid hormone is available. If there isn't enough, then the brain is going to increase its order to get the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone, or at least that's the way it works in a normal functioning system. This is why we can use TSH as a proxy marker for thyroid function because if there's a decrease in thyroid hormone output, we would expect that TSH to go up. However, something that most doctors forget is when we have Hashimoto's, these things don't work as we would normally expect them to. If our brain was working perfectly and we were only having problems with our thyroid gland, then yes, TSH would be a very reliable marker for us to look at. However, in the case of Hashimoto's, we know that it's an autoimmune condition that can have systemic inflammatory effects and thyroid antibodies can negatively impact our brain. So what does that mean if our brain isn't functioning at its best? Well, these inflammatory and immune-based problems can change the way the brain interprets the amount of thyroid hormone that's in the bloodstream and the way that it sends out its order forms. This disrupts the communication between the brain and the thyroid gland. So let's break this down real quick by using a real world example. Let's say you have Hashimoto's and the autoimmune activity that's occurring is damaging your thyroid gland and decreasing the amount of thyroid hormone that it can make. Normally, your brain would try to compensate for this by increasing TSH and increasing the amount of orders for thyroid hormone. However, in your particular case, the inflammation that is associated with the autoimmunity is also affecting your brain. This is leading to neurological symptoms like brain fog, decreases in memory, and also heightened anxiety. But on a hormonal level, it's decreasing your brain's ability to produce and release TSH. When you eventually go into your doctor, you're having the neurological symptoms in association with all the other thyroid symptoms, and they look at things and they go, you know what, your TSH looks normal, so don't worry about it. But as you now know, they might not be considering the systemic effects that Hashimoto's can have and how it can impact your brain. And if the TSH doesn't come back as abnormal, 
then most doctors aren't going to look at any other thyroid markers. So to quickly recap that section for you, TSH is secreted from the brain, not from the thyroid gland. And although it will change and fluctuate based on changes in thyroid hormone, problems with the brain can artificially suppress the amount of TSH that we see on our labs. Reason number two why focusing on TSH can limit your results is that TSH can fluctuate on a day by day, week by week, or month by month basis depending on your immune system activity. While it is true that some people will be put on thyroid medication and their numbers won't change for years or even decades, I usually treat that as a good sign that there isn't a lot of variability or active progressive damage occurring to their thyroid gland due to their immune system. However, for most people, their immune system is all over the place and this can cause fluctuations in their TSH due to chronic irritation of the immune system and daily triggers that are occurring. Because the interplay between the thyroid gland and the autoimmune activity that's occurring is so dynamic, the brain is working overtime to try to keep up with this. And if the brain is functioning somewhat normally and there's a flare up of autoimmune activity, well, that's going to decrease hormone production and cause the TSH to go up. But if our immune system is more calm, then thyroid function is going to be more normal and TSH is going to come back down. However, the question becomes, when did you get your testing done and what is that actually reflective of? For example, let's say you're cruising along and things are going pretty well for you. You go in and get your labs done for your six month or yearly checkup, but then the next day, bang, work gets crazy for you and you're hit with a ton of stress and all your symptoms start to go haywire. Well, when you follow up with your doctor, they might send you an email that says, everything looks good, just keep on doing what you're doing, but it doesn't account for the fact that those fluctuations can, as we said before, occur on a daily basis. Now you're stuck with a medication for the next six months, which not, might not be attuned to what you actually need. And this is a great time to remind you that there is no magic dosage of thyroid hormone that'll help to resolve all your symptoms. And it will be very difficult for you to find that level that helps you feel better until you do things to normalize your immune system and reduce antibody levels. So instead of having one day dictate your thyroid medication for the next six to 12 months, keep the big picture in mind, make sure you're checking all of your thyroid markers, and also if you're not feeling the way you expect to feel, reach out to your doctor sooner rather than later. But before we move on to our final reason, if some of these experiences sound familiar to you, like going into your doctor and having them tell you that your TSH is normal even though you don't feel normal, or you were given a particular dosage of thyroid medication and it didn't provide you the results you expected, let me know in the comments below. I always appreciate getting your guys' feedback and hopefully your experience can help someone else who's going through the same thing. So the last reason why focusing on TSH can limit our results and prevent us from feeling better is because TSH only tells us about the amount of thyroid medication that's being absorbed and the amount that's being produced from the thyroid gland, but it doesn't tell us about how that hormone is actually being used. Now when it comes to thyroid problems, and we've talked about this before, but there's a difference between an issue with the quantity of hormone present and the utilization of that hormone. And with Hashimoto's, we can actually have both. The autoimmune activity can decrease our gland's ability to make thyroid hormone, and the inflammation that comes along with it can prevent that hormone from actually binding to the cells and driving cellular metabolism. This leads to a slowdown in activity, which causes all of the symptoms that we're familiar with. So although we can quote unquote fix a TSH problem by adding more medication, it really doesn't do anything to help us out with that utilization problem. So although we might have the right amount of thyroid hormone, and that's being reflected by the TSH being within the normal lab ranges, it doesn't tell us about whether or not that hormone's being transported around the body properly. Is it being dropped off at the cells and converted into the active form? And once it's done that, is that active form interacting with the cells in the proper manner? And unfortunately, it kind of all comes down to this. TSH is the most commonly checked marker because it is the one that most readily responds to thyroid hormone medication. But it doesn't tell us about the big picture and how you're actually feeling. 
things like our immune system, gut function, hormones, and stress levels all play a part in our thyroid pathway, and to properly assess that, we need to look at an entire thyroid panel. For me and my patients, I like to include things like TSH, because yes, it is a part of the puzzle, but also things like total and free T4, total and free T3, TPO and TG antibodies, reverse T3, and also T3 uptake. Once we have a better idea of the bigger picture, then we can actually address and support the things that your body needs. But remember, Thyroid hormone replacement is just a patch. It's there to deal with the ramifications of Hashimoto's, not actually fix and support our immune system. And if we don't address that first, then it will be very difficult for us to have success long term. But I hope you liked today's video, and if you are tired of all the guesswork and not getting good answers from your doctor, then send me an email at contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com to see if we would be a good fit to work together. We always start by setting up a free one-on-one -on -one consultation where we can talk about the strategies that we would use and learn a little bit more about your health. Also, if you've been using a low-carb or ketogenic way of eating to support your thyroid symptoms, don't forget to grab my free download at the link in the description box below. It's electrolytes for Hashimoto's and keto, and it'll help you to optimize those levels. That way you can feel and function your best. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks as always for hanging with me. If you haven't started following me on Instagram or social media, all the links for that are in the description box below. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Dr. Brad Bodel. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next Thursday.